morning and welcome to Moving Well. We are a class of neuro movement students and it's a work that's totally different than your regular exercise class. So if you're going to keep on watching, you will notice that there's a definite difference. And also I wanna let you know that if you're ever interested in joining us for the class, it is a free class, it's at the Addison Township Center. And you can just call my number, 734-652-5632, if you are interested in knowing more. So with that, uh, today we're going to be doing a lesson that it's a great lesson for really slowing down and sensing what you're feeling. And it's a lesson that I think we've done, we probably did it last year sometime, but I'm going to really ask you to really play with moving really slow and even doing some imagining. I really want you to get the feeling of what happens when you're allowing your brain to make differences. So are there any questions? If there are any questions during the class, don't hesitate to ask. But the main thing, or did you have a question? Yes? Oh, you're good to, good to go, no, you're seeing. <laughs> okay, so basically moving slow is the main thing. Paying attention to what you're really sensing and feeling. Letting yourself be curious. Be a little more like a kid. And just be curious about what you're sensing and feeling. And even, am I pushing it? <laughs> am I asking too much now? Even let yourself get a little enthusiastic when you notice something. Just up your interest a little bit. You know how kids are. When they get excited about things that they do, let yourself get a little enthusiastic. Just up the barometer a little bit. Okay, so you'll want to take your glasses off. You've already done that. Go ahead and lay on your back. And we'll start just giving you a few moments for you to notice what you're feeling, what, you're, what gets your attention as you first lay down now. Is it the place that, places that there are spaces between you and the floor? Or are there places that you feel like you rest more heavily than others? And notice the leaning point of your head. Is the leaning point like right in the middle of the back of your head or is it more towards your neck or more towards the top of your head? Is it more to one side or the other side? Just notice what it is now. Notice the space between your neck and the floor. Feel your two shoulder blades on the floor. If they're touching the floor, maybe they're not hardly touching the floor. Just notice how the right shoulder blade is, how the left shoulder blade is. And then start at the top of your spine, right at the base of your skull, the base of your head, top of your neck, and begin to scan down your spine. Scan the vertebra in your neck. There are seven of those and that travels on down to where your shoulders begin, that C7, if you want to feel back there, right at that spot, that vertebra is a little bit bigger than the rest of them, and it's a good landmark. Uh, we use it periodically. So just get a sense of where that is. That's the base of your neck. And from there, your thoracic vertebra start and they are attached to your ribs all the way down, except for the last two ribs. The last two ribs are attached to your spine, and, but they are not attached in the front to your sternum, your rib cage. So get a sense of how you're resting on your ribs behind, and in your imagination, or you can use your hands and feel, how your ribs wrap around from your spine around to your sides, 
and then on to the front where they attach directly to your breastbone, your sternum, the upper ones do, and then the lower ones kind of join together with cartilage and attach with cartilage to your sternum. And then, like I mentioned, there are two floating ribs on each side that are attached to your spine, but they're not attached in the front. They're just floating, like they're called. And then when you get to the uh, bottom of your spine, the bottom of your vertebra, you hit the sacrum, which is that flat bone in the back of your pelvis. Notice how you're resting on that. What part do you lean heavily on? Where are there spaces? And at the bottom of your sacrum is your tailbone. Can you sense where your tailbone is? If it's following its normal curve, it would be curved a little bit towards the anterior part of your cell. But often the tailbone can be uh, not quite in that position. It can be a little off to one side or the other, or it can even be straight rather than a little curved. And then scan back up your spine, just at your own pace, from your tailbone, through your sacrum, to your low back area, and then on through your mid-back, up between your shoulder blades, and again through your neck. And then Feel your right shoulder blade on the floor and scan down your right arm from your shoulder, the tip of your shoulder, <laughs> through your upper arm to your elbow, from your elbow, through your lower arm to your wrist, and through your hand and fingers. And then bring your attention back up to your left shoulder blade your left shoulder, and do the same thing. Scan down your left arm from the tip of the shoulder to the elbow, through your lower arm to your wrist, and through your palm and fingers and thumb. Take a moment to notice the position that your arms are resting in, the distance they are, your hands are from your pelvis, just notice what is now. That's one of the things that sometimes changes during a lesson. So when we scan at the end of the lesson, you might want to take note of that also. And then feel the way the two sides of your pelvis are resting, the right side and the left side. Is one side heavier than the other, lighter than the other. Feel your sacrum. Again, note what part of your sacrum you're resting on. And then scan from the top of your hip joint in your pelvis there, down through your upper leg to your knee, from your knee through your lower leg to your ankle, and through your right foot and toes, noting the di direction that your toes are pointing now. And then bring your attention back up to your left hip joint and do the same thing. Feel how that part of your pelvis is resting Scan down your upper leg to your knee, from your knee to, through your lower leg to your ankle, through your ankle, through your heel, your foot, and your toes. And note what direction those toes are pointing. And notice, are your legs resting similarly or is there a difference between one and the other? And now slowly bend your knees, stand your feet, Mm-hmm. Yeah, thanks for mentioning it. We So now play with where you have your feet. You want them basically a little about hip width apart and play with, you know, shifting them a little to the outside and a little to the inside, a little forward and a little back until you find the place where they stand most easily, where you have, uh, don't have to engage a lot of muscular energy to hold them up. And now feel, 
did that change the way your, the back of your pelvis is in contact with the floor? And now, I'm going to have you lower your legs, but in a certain way. I want you to tip your right knee to the side and then slowly slide your foot down. And then do the same thing with your left legs. Tip it to the outside and slide your foot down. And now scoop your right foot. Do you know what I mean by scoop your right foot? Kind of twist your ankle a little as though you're going to show the bottom of your foot to, the, to your other foot. So you scoop it, your toes will go down. And it'll kind of make your knee turn to the outside, which is what I'm going for. So scoop your foot like that so your knee turns to the outside. And then slowly drag your foot up with your knee going to the outside until it comes to a point where your foot would stand kind of automatically, or easily anyway. You're going to bring it up and leave it standing. <clears throat> So you draw your knee up and then bring your knee in so that you're standing on that foot. And then slowly let it tilt to the outside again and slowly slide it down. Pause, take a breath. And then do that same thing again. Scoop your right foot, draw it up to the outside, slowly bring it to standing, and then again gently tilt it to the outside. Your ankle will twist a little, and slowly slide your leg down. And now notice, do you feel anything shifting or changing in your hip joint in, or in the right side of your pelvis? Does it change the way you're in contact with the floor, the way you're resting on your pelvis on that side? Yes? No? Okay. So that's one experience of what it means to move slow. So now, do that same thing with your right leg. With your, you're still with your right leg. <laughs> you're bringing your right leg up to stand, and you're going to keep it standing. And now begin to scoop your left foot and let your knee bend out to the side and slowly bring your left leg to standing in the same way. Notice when you inhale and when you exhale. And once you have it standing, take a breath and then let it tilt to the outside. And when it's long, pause and take a breath again. And just repeat this a couple more times at your own pace, but be sure you pause and take a breath in between the movements. Are you letting your belly be soft or are you sucking your belly in? Try it both ways once just so you feel the difference. And now the next time you have your left leg long, also lower your right leg. Mm -hmm. 
And then once you have both legs long, take a moment and notice, is there any difference in the way your pelvis is resting on the floor? If you notice that your pelvis is resting differently on the floor, lift one hand and give me a wave. <laughs> okay, so that is an example of what happens when you move slow and pay attention. So that's what I want you to continue to do through this lesson, okay? All right, now bend your knees one at a time in the fashion that I've just had you do, or you. Bend, take your knee to the outside, drag your foot up. And so through this lesson, you continue to raise and lower your legs in this manner. And then find that place where your feet stand easily. Play with the distance that they are between, uh, from your pelvis, from your bottom. Try pulling them a little closer, pushing them a little away. And then you want them about hip width apart. So just take a moment to find the place where they're standing most comfortably. And now begin to gently press on your feet and roll your pelvis up towards your waist. Gently. It doesn't have to be a big move. Let it be a small move. Roll it gently up. And then let your belly come out and roll your pelvis down. You'll notice that your belly is really important. The movement of your belly is really important for free movement of your pelvis. <clears throat> so anytime you want to roll your belly, your, roll your pelvis up, you're going to have to pull your belly in a little bit. And it'll roll up. Anytime you want it to go down, roll down, and notice that's when you get an arch in your back. You want to push your belly out. So start by just doing that, rolling it up towards your waist and then rolling it down towards your tailbone. And just do this gently, slowly, just like you've been doing with your legs. Be sure you're breathing, not holding your breath. And just continue letting it be gentle. Remember, remember, if you feel any resistance at all, it's not an indication to push harder. It's an indication to stop, back up a little, take a breath, and then proceed slower. Just in that action of stopping, taking a breath, and slowing down, gives your brain a chance to make things work differently. And you may begin to even feel a movement in your chin, your head. So be sure that there is your jaw is soft, there's space between your teeth. Just a reminder, our pelvis and our jaw mirror each other. So when we, if we are, tend to be a teeth grinder or grit our teeth, that has an impact on our low back and our pelvis. So as you're continuing to very gently roll your pelvis up and down, just for a moment, clench your teeth and see what that does for you. And then intentionally let your jaw be soft. Create some space between your teeth. And remember, each time you lower your legs and bend your legs, you're going to do it in the fashion that you've been doing so far this morning. 
So go ahead and bring that to a stop. Slowly lengthen your legs and rest for a moment. And observe for any changes, maybe even changes in your breathing now. And now bend your knees again, stand your feet. And now, be sure your feet are about hip width apart. And now, roll your pelvis a little over to your left hip joint, and then roll it back over to your right hip joint. And there I see there, there's a variety of ways of doing that. All are valid. but they're not all the way we're going to do it in this lesson. But this is good for you to experience this option <laughs> because there are some lessons that we do tilt the knees from side to side. But that isn't what we're going to do in this lesson here. So your knees are going to stay upright. Be sure your feet are about hip width apart so they're comfortable there. And now the, your feet are hip width apart. Your knees are going to stay pointed towards the ceiling and as you press on your right foot to roll your pelvis to the left, think of your knee going forward. Forward, not to the side. Bring your knees back up. So, and then straighten your foot so you hit the part. Okay, now you're going to roll your pelvis over to the left. So your knees are going to stay here, but you're going to push on this foot and push your knee towards me. Just a little bit, doesn't have to go far. Just let it, let, you want the movements to be small. So just as much as you go by just pressing a little bit, just feeling the weight shift over there, that's all you need. Oh, okay. That's as much as you want. Okay. And then do the same thing, push on your left foot and roll your pelvis over this way. And the other piece is the belly. So you want, when you press on your right foot, to roll your pelvis to the left, think of pushing your belly out towards this thigh. Push the belly towards that thigh. See, that helps, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. And then you come back, and then you push your belly out towards this thigh. And you're thinking of your knees going forward instead of going. If you think of the belly instead of the knees, it helps. Yes. And let it be small enough. Push your belly out towards this thigh, and then come back, and then push your belly out over here, and come back. So you push on, oh, I'm sorry, you pu I should have told you I'm here. You're going to push on this foot, push your belly out towards this thigh, and roll your pelvis to the left, and then you come back. Breathe, push your belly out over this way, and you think of your knee going forward as you press. And you feel what that does in your spine? Press on this foot, think of the belly going here, beautiful. And then the other way around, push the belly out here, push the belly out. And then pause in between. I think you got it. Mm -hmm. There's always applause. <laughs> yeah. Is this as much as your knees bend comfortably? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so let your movements just be really small. So you, when you press on this foot, this knee is coming forward, your belly goes this way. You really push the belly out. Feel how that arches your back? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's what we want. 
And then you push the belly out over here, and that arches your back. And it, just a small movement is enough. It's, you want it being as easy as possible. And then le let it go, lengthen your legs and rest. There's a whole, whole series of lessons called pelvic clock lessons, and that's what these are. And <clears throat> um, and it's handy to have these in your repertoire because you can use them most any time. Okay, take a moment to feel anything that's different since you first laid down. Anything changing in your contact with the floor, in your breathing. And then bend your knees again, stand your feet. And as I mentioned, these are called pelvic clock lessons. So we're going to turn your pelvis into a clock. So I want you to really visualize and imagine putting numbers. You're, 12 o'clock is going to be up by your waist, and 6 is going to be down by your tailbone. 3 o'clock is by your left hip joint, and 9 o'clock is by your right hip joint. So I want you to really imagine writing or painting these numbers on your clock. You've got the four basic numbers, so you can fill in the 1 and the 2 and the 4 and the 5. And, so on. But really, you know, pick colors that you like. You, know, you can do it with marker, you can do it with a paintbrush, you can paste on number stickers, you can do anything you want <laughs> to make your clock. And you can make it any size you want. But you're going to be laying on the face of a clock, which will make it a lot easier for me to tell you what moves I want you to make. So everybody got their numbers on? Anybody still painting? OK, so now begin to very gently press on your feet a little to roll your pelvis up towards 12 o'clock up by your waist, and then roll it back down to 6 o'clock. And repeat that a few times. And each time you, when you've gone up to 12 o'clock and then down to 6 o'clock, come back to neutral and take a breath. And then do it again. So you pause and take a breath in between each move. And then let that go. Just pause for a moment. Take a breath. Take note of anything that's different just from having done that. And now take a moment to imagine this first. You're going to roll your pelvis from 3 o'clock over to 9 o'clock and back again. You're going to repeat 9 o'clock and 3 o'clock. And the knees stay towards the ceiling. Remember, <clears throat> the knees stay towards the ceiling. 
which means when you're going to three o'clock, you're going to press on this foot, and this one's going to come, but this stays here. It's not that big a move. Okay. You got to, it has to be a smaller move. All the moves are supposed to be smaller. Okay, bend this knee too. Okay, now press here and gently push your belly over and then come back to neutral. Just go a little bit, take a breath, and then do that one and come back to neutral and breathe. Let everything relax. We want to be starting each move from a very relaxed place. And then gently, beautiful, there. And then back to neutral and breathe. A little bit, and then come back to neutral, and rest. Pause, take a breath. Freeing up the belly is vitally important for so many actions, so many, so many movements. Pause and take a breath in between each cycle. Notice how far up your spine. Can you feel the way your sacrum is rotating from side to side? Are you beginning to feel that kind of rotation happening up your spine? Keep them a little smaller. There, stop there. You need to learn to be lazy. <laughs> I'm good at that. <laughs> well, you got to bring that bring that attribute to class. <laughs> so the belly goes out in the direction that you're turning. <laughs> and then let it go, lengthen your legs and rest. You all come to class to learn how to be lazy. <laughs> lazy, which means really easy movements. So now, notice, is anything changing in your contact with the floor? And then slowly bend your knees again, stand your feet. And now very gently, in fact, everybody imagine doing this first. So when you're imagining, I should see no movement, okay? So imagine rolling your pelvis up towards 12 o'clock and then going to 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, and back to 2 o'clock, 1 o'clock, and 12 o'clock. <coughs> Remember about your belly. Our pelvis tends to go where our belly goes. Can you, you know, just knowing that much, knowing that your belly has to be free for your pelvis to move, can you imagine how much of that holding your gut in, how much impact that's had on your back. We've caused a lot of back injuries this way. Because when your belly muscles are engaged, then your back muscles are turned off and they're very vulnerable. But right now we want your everything available when it's meant to be available. 
And you can't roll your pelvis if your back muscles are tight. And now the next time that you're up at 12 o'clock, this time roll from 12 o'clock to 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, and then back to 3 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 12 o'clock. And allow yourself to, you know, imagine doing it and then play with moving. And now add 5 o'clock. The knees stay towards the ceiling. If your knees are moving, you're cheating. You're cheating your pelvis. Your pelvis doesn't get to move if we cheat. Can you feel how by keeping your knees upright that causes you to use your um, belly muscles? It causes you to use your hip joints? Can you feel how your leg into your pelvis is utilized in a little different way? And now, this time go all the way down to 6 o'clock. So you go from 12 o'clock to 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and then back up. And just do that a couple times, two or three times. And then when you've done that two or three times, lengthen your legs and rest. <clears throat> And just a reminder, you're always free to stop and rest before I tell you to stop and rest if you're feeling like you're tired or you're having any difficulty. <clears throat> Now with your legs long, take a moment to feel, did anything change in your contact with the floor <coughs> under your pelvis or under your low back? Or <clears throat> Take time to notice what's different. Maybe even under your shoulder blades may be different. And then bend your knees again, stand your feet. And this time, roll your pelvis up to 12 o'clock and go 12 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 9 o'clock. You're going to do the other upper quarter of the clock. Oh, 
Remember, it can be a small clock you're on. Is that better? Good. And the next time you go 12 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 9 o'clock, go on down to 8 o'clock, and then back up. <coughs> Excuse me. And then add 7 o'clock. So you go 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7. And then back up. And now the next time that you do the move from 12 o'clock down the right side of the clock, go all the way down to 6 o'clock. So you're doing the whole back half of the clock. You go all the way from 12 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 8 o'clock, 7 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and then back to 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock. And just do that two or three times. And once you've done that two or three times, lengthen your legs and rest. And take a few moments to pay attention to <clears throat> your breathing, your contact with the floor, your general overall sense of yourself. And now roll to your side and come up to sit. <clears throat> and you're going to sit with your hands behind yourself and the soles of your feet together. <clears throat> and leaning on your hands. And now in this, in this position, roll your pelvis to 6 o'clock and to 12 o'clock. You won't be able to roll all the way to 12 o'clock, but you're moving in that direction. You're leaning on your hands behind you. And so it's more like you're sitting on the clock now. 6 o'clock towards your pubic bone. 12 o'clock goes behind.
Gotta free that belly. See, these abdominal muscles are really important, but they're not meant to be sucked in all the time. They're meant to be powerful and strong, but powerfully able to push them out, which rolls your pelvis forward, and pulling them in rolls your pelvis back. You push it out, you get tall. Pull it back, you get shorter, you round. See, your whole back, your whole spine rounds when you roll your pelvis back on your tailbone. And then when you roll towards your pubic bone, can you feel how it erects your spine? <clears throat> you know, let that go, lay on your back and rest for a moment. <clears throat> And then roll to your side again. And this time, come up to lean on your elbows and forearms. What does that mean? <laughs> this is leaning on your elbows and forearms with the soles of your feet together. If it's too uncomfortable, then, then if it's too uncomfortable, then sit. Come up to sit. <clears throat> Come up on your hands because you're working too hard. You stay there <laughs> on your hands. Just just lean back on your hands where you're where you're comfortable. And now in this position, roll your pelvis up to twelve o'clock and down to six o'clock. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. And then pause and imagine it. See, these, these problems like cramps and that give us an opportunity to really engage our imagination, which is so powerful and we're so reluctant to do it. <clears throat> and if it's bothering your neck, do a couple moves and then lay down. <clears throat> And then leave it alone, lay on your back and rest. <clears throat> and then roll to your side and come up to sit again. This time you're going to sit with the soles of your feet together. Or thereabouts and leaning on your hands behind you. And now, leaning on your hands, roll your pelvis over to 3 o'clock and then over to 9 o'clock. Remember the belly. Push your belly out in the direction you want it to go, you want to go. And your belly comes in, you go to, and then you go to 9 o'clock, Push your belly out in that direction. Roll your pelvis over. Pull your belly in. Let yourself roll back. Push your belly out towards your other knee. <clears throat> and make sure you're breathing. Let your whole spine round. So when you're going from 9 o'clock to 3 o'clock, you let your back round and and then you push your belly out towards your thigh again. Then you roll back towards your tailbone and then pulling your belly in. And then you push your belly out towards your other thigh. Let it be gentle. And if it's awkward, just do a couple moves and then lay down and rest. What's hurting? Ah, okay. Then, <clears throat> yeah, just let it let it rust. Can it, just no, don't even turn it there. Uh -huh. Just keep it. And still do it. Yeah, you can still do it. Okay. See, you feel how you shift your weight from one sit bone to the other, mm -hmm. and then push your belly towards your thigh. See, these bellies are important. You have to be able to push them out. 
And then leave it alone, lay on your back and rest. Pardon? And then. <laughs> gotta appreciate it. I gotta appreciate it. Use it. And now take a moment to feel how you're in contact with the floor. Is anything or is anything changing in your contact, in your breathing? And now bend your knees, stand your feet. And now roll your pelvis six o'clock and twelve o'clock a few times, gently. How far up your spine can you feel the movement of your pelvis now? So let it be gentle. <clears throat> let it be so gentle that I can't see that you're moving. Do you notice as you're thinking of your pelvis going towards your tailbone and up towards your waist, can you sense the sensation of movement going all the way to your head? How far up your spine can you feel it moving? <clears throat> so let your attention be there and imagine that when you roll to six o'clock, the, the tension pulls down your spine. It's not really a tension, a sensation pulls down your spine to your tailbone, and then when you roll your pelvis up towards 12 o'clock, imagine this sensation, this energy moving all the way up to the base of your skull. <coughs> so it's the value of having lessons that aren't easy to get in position for is it gives you an opportunity to really imagine. And, you're, and the exciting part is that your brain is actually doing some organizing and doing some work as you're imagining. And now shift Pause first and then shift to thinking of rolling your pelvis 9 o'clock and 3 o'clock. And as you're imagining it, also remember your knees are going to stay pointed towards the ceiling. So let it, as you start moving, let it be really small movement. Just If you let it be small, then your hip joints are going to learn what to do. If we try to go big, we'll mess it up. <clears throat> So start out just imagining rolling your pelvis from 9 o'clock to 3 o'clock, from side to side. <clears throat> and you feel it rolling, rolling across your sacrum. And you sense your two sit bones moving. And now begin to notice how far up your spine do you feel the movement, the rotation of your spine as you're slowly shifting from the right side to the left side and back again. Do it in slow motion. We sense much more when we slow way down. Be sure there's space between your teeth. slowing way down through how much of yourself do you feel this movement? Then pause in the middle and breathe for a moment. And 
And then using that same quiet, still, small movement, begin to roll 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock. So as you all slow down to really imagine, can you feel the, the quiet in the room? It's just a whole different sensation in the room when everybody slows down to that level. And then just pause for a moment. Lengthen your legs for just a moment. That was awesome, guys. Gals. A moment to notice yourself. And then slowly bend your knees again. Stand your feet. Now remembering that same slow, small moving. Imagine first that you're going to roll your pelvis towards 12 o'clock, and you're going to roll it to 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock. And then you'll pause and breathe, and then you'll do it again. And decide right now that you're not going to struggle or effort. So if there's a number you're not quite reaching yet, you could take a breath, relax, imagine falling into that number, and then just continuing. And you can let your clock be as small as a 50-cent piece. We don't see those anymore, do we? Make it the size of a silver dollar. We don't see those much anymore either. So you're going clockwise around the clock, ever so gentle and small, continuing to breathe. Be sure you're not holding your breath. And then pause and reverse the direction. You're going to go counterclockwise around the clock. It will be 12 o'clock. 11 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 9 o'clock, and so on. And then pause, slowly lower your legs. Thank you for joining us today. We invite you to come to class at any time, but in the meantime, just keep on moving well.